Comic fans, what's going on? It's Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Got another five must-reads for you all. It's been a while. Man, it's been a while. Honestly, the, the reality of it is it takes a while to find these gems for you all. But after reading Alienated, some people suggested I do this, talk about some boom titles. And you know what? The reality of it is that there are a lot of fantastic, fantastic boom titles. So we're going to talk about five newer ones here. They're not brand new, so you've got a good chunk of issues with all of these to read and catch up on. And they, they're all spectacular. They're all such incredible series that absolutely had me thrilled and on the edge of my seat and I plowed through. I'm going to talk about the first trade paperback for every series in this video. Um, I've read more, of course, but just, you know, to keep it spoiler free, keep it relatively light, let you know what you're in for on the first volume. I'm going to keep it as spoiler free as I can. If I let something slip, let's be a little forgiving and realize it's at least just the first trade paperback, right? I'm not going to give away any major spoilers though, but... Without further ado, be sure to subscribe. If you're new to the channel and you like top fives, you like anything comic related, hardcover comics, custom binding, live streams, overviews, reviews, rereading books and talking about them, giving my opinion on them, Matt and I both, um, subscribe. That's all I can say. If you're interested in winning a brand new Omnibus Absolute Edition, Deluxe Edition, a set of Deluxe Editions, who knows what else, check out our Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. One dollar gets you one entry into the drawing at the end of every month. The more money you want to give, the more entries you get into the drawing itself. Um, and the more money we get, the crazier stuff we can get. We can get more books too. Hopefully we can get to a point where we're getting two Omnis for someone. It'd be incredible. Um, but let's talk about some boom titles. <laughs> The first title I wanted to talk about is Something is Killing the Children. This is a series by James Tiny in the Fourth with artwork by Werther Deladera and Mikel Muerto. This is, a, I, I'm sorry if I butchered last names. I mean, come on, there's got to be some forgiveness here. I'm just kidding. Um, this is a fantastic title. At the moment of this recording, there are 10 issues out. Of course, it's all published by Boom Studios because we're talking about Boom Studios. Um, this is a really, really fun series um, without giving away too much. Without giving away too much, it follows um, a young boy and this this relatively older woman. Um, not too old though; she's still pretty young. But essentially, in this town, there are kids disappearing. Um, their bodies are not being found. If they are being found, they're being found, well, dead. Um, and basically, the series follows these two characters as um, as they start to learn more about what's happening. You find out what this lady's background is, what she's been involved with in the past. It turns out that there are monsters in the world. So much fun. Um, this is sort of a horror title with uh, a lot of really fantastic... I, I enjoyed the artwork myself, personally. It's, um, you know, it's a little grittier, it's a little looser on the lines, but it really matches the title, and it reminds me sort of, you know, of the other titles James Tiny has done with Ed Boom, like The Woods, for example. Really, really fantastic stuff. There's a lot of violence. This is not for, ki this is not for children. There's, there are curse words. Um, there's violence, like I said, but the story itself is really really intriguing. Um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stop myself from going to the next issue um, as you start to learn about sort of the mythology within this universe that James Tynion is building. Um, you get to see, again, some incredible action sequences. You get to see some beautiful, beautiful um, backgrounds and scenery in this town. And of course, trying to figure out what exactly is going on is a huge part of the fun. Um, you do figure out things like there are monsters, but you know, who is this woman? What, who does she work for? How did she come to be where she is now? I'm very excited to see where this title goes. Hopefully it doesn't end too soon, um, but I'm really glad. So far there are 10 issues out, so there's a good chunk of material for you to read and catch up on. There are great twists and turns in here, and the, the overall ambiance and atmosphere of the series is quite chilling. I really enjoyed it. It's definitely a horror title, a horror action thriller, a lot of fun, uh, a ton of fun. If you're looking for something like that, if you're looking for something with monsters and, um, you know, intrigue and mystery, definitely check out Something is Killing the Children. Next up is a title that deserved an entire video from me. Um, I love it so much. Probably one of the best stories I've read ever, definitely in 2020, and that is Alienated by Simon Spurrier, Chris Wild Goose, and Andre May. A beautiful, beautiful, stunning tale that follows three characters named Sam, Samantha, Samuel, and Samir, as they sort of um, accidentally run into this alien interdimensional being named Chip. They named him Chip. Um, and 
things spiral out of control from there. These three kids, they all go to the same school together, the same high school. They're all going through personal problems and struggles and, and difficulties. And, they, you know, they all happen to find each other one day as they're going to school and they find Chip. And uh, things spiral out of control. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, Chip has really cool powers. He's an interdimensional being. Um, and he... It's very, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Simon Spurrier does a really great job of not only tackling very intense and controversial, maybe not controversial, but very intense social issues that we're facing now in this day and age. Um, but he also merges those with issues that teenagers feel on a regular basis, regardless of what time they're, they're growing up in. Um, it's really, really brilliantly done. You get to see how these different characters interact with Chip and the abilities that he grants them and how those abilities affect their problems and their ability to deal with their problems um, with spectacular, I mean, jaw-dropping artwork by Chris Wildgoose. I absolutely love his artwork. I can't show too much of the art itself because... Um, I don't want to spoil anything. Literally, the third issue, it's it's too late. I can't show more than the the first two issues because it's uh, it's really really powerful, really very excellently done. The plot is layered. Um, it's intricate. It's a six issue miniseries, so you're not you know you're not in for a long haul. But the story is, you know, very dense and very well put together with a lot of different angles and plot lines going. I absolutely adored it. If you if you're looking for a, a a really interesting read that has great action. It's got a great overall storyline, but that has really deep uh, conversations about things that are happening in this day and age with teenagers. I highly recommend you check out Alienated and just, I mean, the, oh, the artwork is so good. It's so good. I love this book so much. Alienated, by far one of my favorite series of 2020. Be sure to check it out. Next up is another mini series called Folklords. Um, Folklords is written by my guy Matt Kent. I love Matt Kent very much with artwork by Matt Smith. Um, really, really fantastic series. It's five issues long, nice mini series, but it's again relatively dense. You get a full entire story with a nice cliffhanger at the end as well. I personally really dug Matt Smith's artwork. It's uh, got a cartoony vibe to it. It's got very much a fantasy cartoon vibe. It's fantastic. It fits the title brilliantly. And basically, the, the series follows a character named Ansel. Ansel lives in a fantasy land, basically. You know, any sort of storybook, any sort of child storybook, or, you know, Harry Potter, any sort of fantasy land you can think of, it's sort of an amalgamation of all those. Um, and basically, within this fictional world, this fantasy world, kids at, at a certain age have to go on a quest. They need to dictate what their quest is going to be, whether it's finding the golden goose, or, you know, trying to conquer a dragon, or whatever it may be. And Ansel's quest is to find the folklords. The folklords are these mythical beings that, you know, have created all these folk tales and the, basically the world that they live in. And Ansel's quest is to find them and gain some enlightenment through that. And of course, that's a mission, a quest that is not permitted within this world. And um, essentially, the enforcers of this world are librarians. It's very interesting. I, again, I don't want to spoil too much because it's just five issues, but the way it all ties together is really excellently done. He encounters characters along the way. Um, there's a, a fantastic character named Ugly who shows up. Um, you get to see sort of, you know, other fairy tales and storybook tales kind of merge together and play a little part here and there within this storyline. It's really fun, really well done. Um, it's great to see how it ends. It's a, it leaves on a cliffhanger, sort of leaving you leaving your imagination open to it. But it's also sort of about, you know, for yourself as a person, what's your adventure going to be? What expectations are you setting for yourself? Um, what do you, you know, uh, are, are you expecting a specific kind of ending? It's really fascinating. It's really well done. It's a fun read through the, the entire way through. There are a lot of really great characters that show up here and there that make little appearances um, that really add a lot of flavor and personality to the world. It's fantastic. The, the, the artwork is, is great. I must say, Boom, when it comes to Boom stories, the, the writing and artwork for some reason just seems to be excellent all the way around. I absolutely love Folklords. It was not what I was expecting at all, which is Matt Kint's way. I mean, Matt Kint is, again, one of those writers. If you aren't looking out for Matt Kint books, you really should be. He's doing an upcoming series with Keanu Reeves called Berserker. Looks very exciting. I believe that's Boom Studios as well, so I'm sure I'll be doing a video about it. But I can't recommend Folklords enough. If you're looking for a fantasy book, um, you know, with a lot of adventure, and again, it's about, you know, teenage kids, but these are all things that, that, that apply to everybody at any age. Um, it, is, it is a book you, you know, you don't need to be an adult to read. There aren't, there aren't many curse words, if any at all. 
um, and the violence is not gratuitous. So it's really, it's a great story for kids to read as well. I really recommend it. Check out Folk- Folklords. Five issues, you know, you're getting a good chunk of story in a small, without having to read a whole bunch of issues. So highly recommended. Check out Folklords. The next series I wanted to talk about is called The Red Mother. It's a little darker, a little more graphic. This is written by Jeremy Hahn with artwork by Danny Luckert. This was a completely unexpected series for me. I've read quite a few things by Jeremy Hahn, and they've been pretty pretty good. He's had some image titles like The Realm and Beauty, um, which were both you know fairly critically acclaimed, and they were a great read. Um, but Jeremy Hahn uh, has also been an artist in the past, and um, this book completely took me by surprise. It's spectacular. It's so good. Um, it follows this character named Daisy, and Daisy essentially one day with her boyfriend something tragic happens and um, she ends up losing an eye as a result. Once she loses her eye, she gets a prosthetic one, but she starts having these visions. She starts having these strange visions of a a horrific monster following her around. A a monster that, you know what, in all honesty, reminds me of something you'd see in a manga or an anime. She starts having these visions at night, these horrific nightmares, um, and you start seeing how that all con- connects and integrates into her reality as people start mentioning this red mother, the mother character. Um, if you're a fan of Gideon Falls, this is right up your alley. That's all I'm going to say right now. Um, it's really very well done. Danny Luckert's artwork is fantastic. I really love the creepy sequences where you see this sort of alternate dimension with this red, I assume the red mother. Um, really, really well done. What's great about it too is you see Daisy interact with like a, her psychologist. You see her interact with her friends and her life. She's essentially a, a game designer, an app designer. And, you know, one day she gets a mysterious puzzle. She starts solving this puzzle. It turns out it's connected to this man who's very, uh, he, he's an eccentric billionaire who's also into games. Um, and they start working on a game together. And again, I'm not going to spoil much more than that. It's a really fantastic story um, about a, a character who went through something tragic and now has to deal with that while more tragedy and malevolence is following her really fantastic i can't wait to see what happens with it there are nine issues total released at this time for the series it's absolutely spectacular i I really really like danny's artwork as well um it's it's very it's not very stylized it's got you know nice crisp lines but again the the way he draws this horror monster and um just the way in general the world looks it's really great i highly recommend it it's um like i said quite gratuitous quite violent very mature so not for children at all, but if you're looking for a horror suspense thriller type of book, like a Gideon Falls type of series, check out The Red Mother. The last book I'm going to talk about is a book that I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of, but I'm going to talk about it again because it's fantastic. Once in Future, this is written by Kieran Gillen with artwork by the sensational, incredibly talented Dan Mora. It follows a character named Duncan McGuire and his grandma um, as they essentially... Okay, so... Um, essentially, they, 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 there's a group of nationalists in England who want to revive King Arthur um, using the sword Excalibur. It's a once in future king. Um, it's really fantastic. It's tough not to spoil this thing at all. Essentially, Duncan finds out his grandma used to be a monster hunter. Um, she used to be a mythical being hunter. And uh, it happens to him very quickly. Within the first issue, you see him dealing with the quest, the questing beast. Um, within a couple issues, you're, you've already have him dealing with this undead king. It's really e- e- exceptionally done. Exceptionally done. There's a lot of mythology mixed into the storyline, which is not unusual for Kieran Gillen. He's done it plenty of times with series like Wicked and the Divine, Phonograms, Die. Um, you know, he's very big into mythology and building this huge universe with seemingly normal characters. I mean, they're you know they're just normal characters. Um, <clears throat> but really, really well done. The artwork by Dan Mora is to die for. I really hope Boom publishes oversized hardcovers for this series. Dan Mora's artwork is just so crisp and clean, and the the angles he uses, they're spectacular. You get to see things like the Knights of the Round Table start to reform. It's exceptionally well done. Lots of twists and turns. I love it very much. Again, I can't, I don't want to spoil too much. I think I've already, I haven't said too much yet. I've, I've talked about things that happened within the first two issues. There are 11 issues out at the time of this recording, so you get a good chunk of story to catch up on. You'll catch up on it quickly. It's one of those books you just keep flying through, flying through it. It's so well done. Amazing cliffhangers, really cool beasts and mythology being used. And uh, yeah, it's just a pleasure to look at and read. 
the characters sort of develop as they you know start to deal with these problems more and more duncan starts learning more about his grandmother all these things he had no idea about and you get to find out more about his grandmother who is such a fun character she's so crazy she's so wild but she's the heart of the series it's very very well done um, I highly recommend checking out Once in Future. It's been so critically acclaimed at this point. Like, all I have to do is say the, the name, and that should be enough for you. Plus, it's Kieran Gillen and Dan Mora. Like, what more do you need? But there you go, folks. Those are five relatively new Boom series for you to check out. They've got, again, it's either a mini series that's entirely complete and you can binge at once, or it's a series that has like 10 issues, 9 to 11 issues. So, um, hopefully, that's enough for you all. I will definitely be looking at Boom titles from. Um, earlier within you know the studio's publication and things that are even I mean they have new titles coming out now that are also spectacular so I'll definitely be talking about those before um before the month is up I'm sure but thank you all very much if you've read any boom titles and you have any recommendations for the kind folks watching the video along with you let us know down in the comments below did you read the series I mentioned did you enjoy them are they would you consider them in your five must read new boom titles uh, list let us know down in the comments below be sure to subscribe if you're a new viewer and you enjoyed the video. This is what we do all the time. Overviews, reviews, top fives, um, live streams, rereading books, a lot of fun stuff going on here. If you're interested in taking it to the next level and potentially winning a brand new Omnibus hardcover, absolute edition, deluxe editions, multiple deluxe editions, check out our Patreon. Every dollar you uh, give will get you an entry into the drawing at the end of every month. Obviously, the more money we get, the more books we can give away to people. So check that out if you're interested in that if you're interested in merch hit us up in our email it's down in the description below we've got mugs we've got t-shirts we got this t-shirt we got t-shirts with the new logo as well a lot of great stuff um just hit us up for more details if you're interested and i hope you guys are all doing well it's been a crazy year a lot of people are getting sick going through tough times i wish you guys all the best truly i do um and if you're not feeling well if you haven't been doing too well i wish you a speedy and excellent recovery wish you all the best Thank you all very much. This is Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Until next time, you stay classy, Internet.